Hey there, it's Chris with Acting Creative, and this is a hand-woven experience. In today's episode, I'm asking a very important question. Are you ready for rose paths? Hmm, think on that for a moment. Let's talk about it, shall we? Rose path at the core of it is a twill, and we know twills, right? A twill fabric always has a kind of a diagonal element to it, and rose path is no exception. You can make very cool diamonds and these cool mountains, and it's there's lots and lots of options with rose path. And once you get into it, you'll see, oh, it's very similar to other twills that you've done. Now, because it's a twill, that means that we're gonna have to have some floating selvages. Just a reminder, floating selvage is a warp yarn that's at the very edge of your fabric. You always have a pair of them, one at each side, and it is a warp yarn whose sole job is to stand still. That's the whole job of the floating selvage. Because it is gonna stand in one place, we need that so that our weft yarn can wrap around it and come back the other way. Because in a twill pattern, in so many cases, just the nature of the beast, the weft yarn doesn't automatically go all the way to the edge. It might stop a few yarns short of the very edge of the fabric. And we don't want that. We want our weft yarn to go all the way to the edge of the fabric every single time we throw the shuttle with every pick. That's what one uh, throw of the shuttle is called a pick. So floating selvages, because the twill, it all, they all go hand in hand. And what I discovered about rose path is that you can have a whole entire fabric of rose path twill beautiful, luscious, you will absolutely love it. But you can also use Rose Path for little decorative elements. Mm -hmm. For instance, you could create a, a, a motif border where you have little, I've seen flowers and all kinds of cool little things that you can add using a Rose Path pattern. So if you're watching this video and you're thinking, ooh, I'm really intrigued. Oh, there's a lot that you can do. And what I'll show you today is just the tip of the iceberg. So go diving, my friend, you'll find lots of cool stuff. So let's talk about what makes Rose Path, Rose Path, what makes it really distinctive. And it really comes down to the threading. Now, when I say threading, what I mean is the sequence that your warp yarns go into your shafts. I'm sitting at the front of the loom. This is the beater bar. Here are my four shafts. So what is the order that I'm going to put my warp yarns into my shafts? Now, in a previous episode, I talked about something called a point twill threading. Mm, let me show you what that looks like. I'm using my favorite book in the whole wide world, the Ann Dixon Handweavers Pattern Directory. And on page 72, this is a great uh, sample of a point twill threading. Uh, by the way, this section of your draft always tells you what the threading is. And look at our visual here. We're going up and we'll go down and then we'll repeat and we'll go up and down and up and down for the whole pattern, for the whole uh, fabric. And what that means for us is that we are going to put a uh, warp yarn uh, number one in shaft number one, and then two and three and four, and then we're gonna go back down. Three, two, one, two, three, four. So you're constantly kind of making this zigzag pattern in your shafts, which is very, very cool. But that's a point twill threading. And Rose Path, it takes it one step further. So on page 74, check this out. This is our Rose Path path threading. And this is really what makes Rose Path distinctive is this threading right here. Now you'll see visually, it kind of looks like our point twill, right? It goes up and then ultimately it goes down, but there's this one little extra in there. And as I was reading information about Rose Path, I found two kind of ways to describe this. The first one was to say that it was a broken point twill, meaning you get to the top and it doesn't go down immediately. It has one more uh, to kind of break the sequence. And that was all fine and good, but the one that I kind of liked said that it was an extended point twill, which sounds wonderful. It sounds like, oh, just a little more. It's just a little extra. And that is what Rose Path really is. It's just a little extra. So as you're threading, you're gonna go one, two, three, four, and then you make a little pit stop, adding just a little extra, a little cherry on top. And then you go back to the top, four, three, two, one, and you do it all over again. But this threading is really what makes Rose Path unique. Now, what I found is that the uh, treadling, meaning which shafts you lift and lower in which order, boy, that can be very different. And if you're on a floor loom, the tie-ups, there's a lot of variation there. So uh, there can be a lot of options for you as you are weaving your Rose Path. So why don't we, uh, why don't I just show you the one that I'm working on right here and you can kind of see what that looks like. 
Okay, so in this particular one, uh, there's a couple of different things happening here. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna use a little red just to, you know, it pops. You gotta love some red. Okay, so uh, for this part of the pattern then, uh, I am only lifting one shaft at a time, but here's what it looks like. I'm gonna send that over that way. That's uh, shaft number four, by the way, is where I'm starting. Shaft number three is next. We'll go back the opposite direction. Shaft number two, you see how this goes, right? Just a little work, just walking it down. Uh, shaft number one. And kind of like our threading, we're gonna add a little something extra. We're gonna go back and do shaft number four. Dun, da, da, da. And then we'll start at the bottom and go back up. So number one. And then number two, you see where this is going, right? And then three. And four. In a little twist of irony, the treadling, so the order that I'm lifting and lowering the shafts is the same, it looks the same as the threading. You gotta love those kind of little geeky moments in the weaving world. Okay, so I'm gonna lean you, lean you over here so you can kind of see. Everybody hang on. Do you see the, see the diamond patterns here? Isn't that fun? Look at what you can do with Rose Path. So much fun, right? So if you've never tried some Rose Path, I would say give it a go. If you are like, okay, I know that I love some twill. This is gonna be great fun. Take it for a test drive. And what is wonderful about Rose Path, as lots of twills, is that you set it up a certain way and then just keep playing with the uh, treadling and the tie-ups. Like keep uh, varying your options because the sky's the limit, honestly. All right, my friends. Go try some Rose Path. It's a lot of fun. And I think you'll find just a million variations for you to play with. And that's uh, good for our creativity all around. All right. Have a wonderful week. Happy weaving.